Alrighty guys, how are we doing today? Back again with a Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom video. This time looking at Rehydrated on the PlayStation 4. This game came out today and super, super excited to jump in and play some of this. I'll probably jump in and play like half an hour or so of this and, uh, and we'll see how we go. I'm going to skip all the cutscenes and stuff because we saw those last week. Just as an FYI, I actually have already recorded this video and I lost all the footage for it. So hooray, we're doing it again. <laughs> So if my reactions are a little bit meh, that's probably why. Uh, I actually just played this for an hour. Welcome to we'll skip all this. And I just literally lost all the footage, unfortunately. So let's let's do it again. And this time we'll see how we go. I played all the way up until the bikini bottom level i think we got 12 spatulas in that playthrough not going to do that again because i um I make myself a snack. had to start an entire save again but it's okay the game is kind of fun this start part of the game to be honest is actually more fun i suppose than the bikini bottom section of the game so once i had gotten to there i was kind of a little bit i don't know it just felt very samey um but uh, i'll play through this again i wanted to make this as a bit of a comparison video to the GameCube and um, yeah, the GameCube version of the game that I played last week, uh, and I feel like this is kind of a good way of doing that. Just gonna adjust that slightly, that way you can see me a little bit better while we're playing. So, this is the first golden spatula in the game. If you're not familiar with this uh, game, SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom is a game that came out on PlayStation 2 and GameCube a number of years ago now and um, it's just been ported across to next gen or current gen consoles um, so you can earn a platinum in it and play through the game again it's been remastered i said this in the recording that got lost but the game plays exceptionally well this uh, gameplay that you're seeing now doesn't it, it's the same as what we played on the gamecube version last week it's just improved um, all across the board which is kind of nice it's uh Feels good, feels nice to play, feels responsive. I didn't come across any problems when I was playing through it for the hour I played through it. The only issue that I came across um, is the loading screens are kind of weird. Like the the loading screen is just like a blank cloudy image. It's it's black cloudy looking image and there's nothing really to it. Um, I'm not really sure why, It's it's a strange one, hey. Cool. just making sure it's recording this time because I lost all that. Um, this is a bug I found last time. When I played it on the GameCube, that ball got stuck in a wall. Uh, what you're actually supposed to do is jump up here and then hit that. And then it unlocks those things. I'm not really sure what you're supposed to do here, but I found that you can kind of just cheese it by jumping up onto this. Well, at least I did last time. I was able to kind of get onto here. Oh. Doesn't actually look like I can. I, I, I definitely... Yeah, there we go. Okay. Are we going to make it in time, though? Maybe not. Ah, definitely not. That's alright. We can do it again. Grr. So, in this game, for those unfamiliar, you have to collect uh, a number of collectibles. So, the main thing you're collecting in the game is golden spatulas. Uh, the secondary item that you're collecting is Patrick's socks. And I think it's every 10... This is where I socks that you earn um, you unlock yourself another golden spatula so they kind of go hand in hand and then the final thing you have to collect are these uh, little objects here they're called shiny things they're like your basic coin currency and uh, once you've collected enough of those you can use them to unlock areas and levels and unlock more spatulas and things like that so that's sort of how it works um, yeah I'm just trying to think what I've said in this playthrough and what I said in the last playthrough. The, the, this is the weird part, the loading screens. They're really long and just so boring. There's like nothing to them. I don't know why. It's it's really it's really quite frustrating. Uh, there's nothing like the sounds of your own neighborhood. All right. We're just going to skip everything again. Um, but yeah, it's, it's exactly the same as it was when I played it a week ago. I'm sort of glad that I did play through it on the GameCube to, to like compare. It gives you a bit more of an appreciation for, I guess, 
a how much the developers done uh, in terms of like getting it to this point because while the fundamentals of the game are the same the gameplay is still just as good and that's I think that's what's really important this game is all about its gameplay essentially oh, you can hear Squidward um, it's all about its uh, gameplay it's all about that platforming and how that platforming feels and how those three characters feel and if they haven't nailed that then what's the point right and there actually hasn't been another spongebob game that's come out since this game to have gotten that right i think all the other spongebob games after this have screwed it up in in one way or another now i can wear four pairs of underwear this is great i feel like a new sponge golden spatula oh, you can actually see the flying dutchman's ship in the background yeah that's quite cool i didn't notice that before um we went into Squidward's house before and just ransacked it and we got a golden spatula for that. So let's do that again. It's these loading screens, they're such a pain. They're so frequent as well because the levels are quite small. So you could be going to the houses, going to different levels, different parts of the levels. They all um they all require a loading screen. I didn't know Squidward had a lamp. This is annoying. Look at this. <laughs> Squidward face. Right. He gives us our golden spatula. It's another freebie. I don't know how many of these there are in the game. I need to look it up. Um, if you guys would be interested in a trophy roadmap or a guide for this one, let me know. And I can look at pulling something together. There's a couple of collectible guides online already, but I I'm kind of keen to do a roadmap for it. I have a question. Who are these two fish in Squidward's house? Because I don't know why Squidward would have a picture of these two random fish. It feels weird. And Smudgeball's just sort of sitting there looking at them at the wall is also pretty strange also this picture here which I, I cracked up about last time what is this is this like I thought this was a meme I've seen this before online and I actually didn't realize it was part of Spongebob I thought it was a meme of Spongebob but I'm guessing it's actually part of something in the series I don't know maybe there's a bigger Spongebob fan out there who knows and they can let me know in the comment section because I I didn't know anything about that ah oh, man he's these really do break up the gameplay though the, the loading screens are bad i don't know why they couldn't have figured out a better way of like loading the game in so that you didn't have to load every single time or wait this long and even if you do that's fine but give us something to look at don't just give us a black screen with a loading bar like that's a big problem in my opinion so i'm gonna criticize it it's a it's an annoyance and if i'm finding it annoying then everyone else playing the game is also finding it annoying I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I assume. So this is Jellyfish Fields. This is the first level in the game. This is actually what I played through on the GameCube uh, a week ago now. So there's that. And also an hour ago. So I have a pretty good idea of how it works. This is still the best cutscene in the game, in my opinion. I just, it's so funny to watch him screaming like that. And then there's just this moment of like, uh <laughs> He just gives up. Alright, let's keep moving. So we need to get the jelly for Squidward. I don't think I'm going to play through that much of it, but I, I think what I'll do is I'll play through at least what I played on the GameCube, and, uh, and we'll, we'll sort of get to that point again. Basically, this is the game. So, beyond, like I said before, you've got to collect the, the two main things, being the spatulas and the socks, so that you can see in the bottom corner. Each level kind of has its own, like, unique objective. Um, this one here, we obviously have to get the jelly. And then, the rest of it is just platforming, killing stuff, and collecting these shiny things. Like you can see here, we have to give them to the clam to progress. Uh, and there's more of those as the game goes on. There actually was a secret back here, which we found before it was like a little sock uh, hidden behind a waterfall okay, another one I don't know how many socks there are in the game I assume a lot <laughs> given it's 10 per golden spatula there must be at least five or so spatulas maybe or more that you can earn from getting socks the jellyfish don't have as much of a like satisfying whack when you hit them the robots kind of explode and that feels nice but when you hit these guys it's just like oh that's not knock at the game it's just 
game still feels great, like I said. And it's, you know, this level here is like great to show off how good it looks as well. Like the first level of the game, obviously they put a ton of effort into it. Honestly, I feel like they probably put more effort into this level than they did at least Bikini Bottom. Because there's more for them to have done here. Um, look at the grass. Let me just turn it around. See the grass and the water textures and the lighting. It's so light and vibrant and nice. And it's just kind of what like a platformer like this should be. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. That's his idle animation. Hey Gary, what's shaking? It's Gary. So he tells us about the bungee, which we did last time. And we get a nice little... Uh, R-rated image of um, Spongebob's butt. It's just very uh, graphic here. It appears like you can see it and it's just unpleasant, you know? I, I think when it was at least in 2D, not 2D, what am I saying? SD, it was less uh, in your face. Now it's an ass. That's kind of weird. Alright, so up here we have the sliding section, I think. Is that what we got up to next? Oh no, there's... Ah, it's our friend the fish. The cutscene is so weird because he's just like screaming for no reason. It's like abnormally him panicking and freaking out. And then you've got this fish who just looks like an absolute moron. And it's as good as well. I like that a lot. And you can, like, beat him up now. The fish still looks just as vacant and as dumb as before. His eyes, his pupils, they get bigger and smaller. Um, there's lots of, like, little things like that, which are kind of weird. I don't know why he's screaming. There's a bit later in the game where Patrick's, like, looking at the guy shooting tartar sauce. And he, uh, <laughs> he starts freaking out as well. Little interstitial cutscene things, which are kind of nice. It adds, like, personality and character to the game. Even though it is awkward, like... I don't know why Spongebob would be freaking out like that. I suppose he does do that in the show. But then there's probably more context to it. I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm probably overthinking all of this for a game about a talking sponge. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a neat platformer. The game still plays just so well. It feels so good to jump around and quit stuff and do all this and... I'm still having a good time, even though I'm replaying this now for the, the second time. Well, I guess third time, technically, because we played it a week ago as well. Ah, uh, this is the part with the ramp. You have to destroy this robot-making machine. We move away from it so it doesn't hit us. There we go. And then we can go now on this special ramp. Ah, five spatulas. Look at that. I wonder if there's a counter on each level of how many spatulas you need to get. I reckon there will be, maybe in the pause menu. Let's have a look at that after this loading screen and we'll see. Because that could be, I mean, that's a good way of figuring out if you've got everything that you need to get before you progress on to the next area. Let's check. Detail. Ah, oh, yes it does. And it tells you how to do it as well. Cool. Alright, perfect. That's, that's really good. Definitely makes earning all the spatulas on a single level easier. Oh, there's a shortcut here on this little rocket power thing, which we found as well. And you get an extra sock from doing this, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and there's another sock. There, I missed that last time, so that's kind of cool. Oh, look, there's, yeah, that's the second way you can go. Okay, checkpoint. This is where we have to fight all these robots. I hate to admit it, but I died again here when I played through it before. So this time, we're going to hit the button before we destroy the machine. Because the machine just has this effect where it knocks you back. And if you stand too close to it after you've hit it, you don't have enough time to hit the button. They haven't changed the voices by the sounds of it. They're exactly the same. And if they have updated the lines, the lines are identical. I haven't heard anything new that I didn't hear when I played it on the GameCube last week. Including the discount Mr. Grabs, which just is laughably awful. And I, f I, I kind of feel sorry for the guy who they got yeah. to do it, because Bye, it. the... Oh, fire, that was close. I just about died again there. The guy obviously got hired to play that role, and he doesn't sound like Mr. Grabs at all. Hey, SpongeBob. And we've unlocked Patrick. Um, he doesn't sound like Mr. Krabs at all, and it's just so awkward and 
I do feel bad for the guy. I feel like he, uh, <laughs> I don't know if he knew what he was signing up for. But I'm sure he wasn't expecting his voice to be used in a remake of the game 20 years later. Patrick feels different uh, in this version, I will say. He feels a lot heavier than he did last time. And the throwing mechanic doesn't work quite as flawlessly as before. There is weight to it now. Um, I noticed, at least, like, when I'm pressing it, before it used to just be nice and float, like, not floaty, but light. Light is the word. Now it feels heavy. Maybe that's intentional, but, uh, I don't know. It does feel different. It's worth mentioning. The rest of the game feels very samey. Um, okay, there's this section in here. Plankton abusing us a little bit. Just keep going through. I got here a lot faster this time than I did last time. I must have been just messing around too much last time because uh, I think I've done it in like half the time. Which is uh, probably not a bad thing. Uh, I'm going to use the same one. Do that. Yeah, I don't know. The throwing doesn't feel as good this time. Oh, we made it. I made it. Just. Okay, so I wasted a lot of time here trying to throw this watermelon across the other side, and you don't even need it over here. I spent way longer than I would uh, like to admit doing that. How many of these do I have to carry? But yeah, the game like brings you back to a way simpler time when like platformers were quite basic like this and you know you, these mascot platformer games were much more prevalent they're just not today there's not a ton of them um i don't know if you guys can even name some decent mascot platformers on ps4 if you've got any recommendations for them let me know because i do really love this genre of games like this and uh, yeah i don't know we've got obviously the ratchet and clank on ps4 as a reboot but like yeah games like that like this, like Ratchet and Clank, uh, like Sly, like Jack. You know, these classic mascot platformer games that have like these sort of beat-em-up elements to them. I don't mean like Crash and... Sp well, I guess Spyro kind of has that, eh? Because you kind of do attack stuff. And Crash is more of a corridor platformer mascot. <laughs> but games that are a bit more like this. Like, I guess these are kind of PS2 era um, games. But maybe there are some on PS4 that I'm not aware of. If there are, then please let me know them because I would like to play them. <laughs> uh, maybe I've played them already. Maybe I haven't. Maybe you have some recommendations for awesome games. But I honestly can't come up with any off the top of my head. I guess like the only ones I can think of are Ratchet and Knack, which is uh, and then now this. Um, Destroy Humans is coming out pretty soon. That's obviously going to be a similar thing as well. Pretty keen on that as well, so I'll definitely be covering that on the channel when that launches. And um, that should be pretty fun too. So that's kind of another one of those, like, the same vein. I wish that they'd came out with a bit more distance between them though, because they're so close together. And I mean, it's fine, but it, it means, like, Ahoy to... there. Squidward tells me you're looking for the king jellyfish. That's so that's awkward. A good thing too. Poor guy, right? It's just so discount freaking Mr. Crab. It's awful. <sighs> Alright, let's uh let's keep moving through. We actually have gotten here way quicker. Oh, this is the cutscene I was telling you about with Patrick freaking out. Some weird popping in this one as well. Well there was last time I played it. I guess it's for introducing each of the enemies. They have like a little unique cutscene, which is kinda cool. <sighs> All right, here we go. These guys here suck, man. They, you, you have to hit them twice, and they're just a burden. They're the only enemy that I came across in any of my playthroughs that you have to hit twice, and it's just like a That's really why. Let's change back to SpongeBob. And we can just sort of fly through the rest of this. I don't think we need Patrick to progress. I think we can use Spongebob. And he's just lighter, he feels a bit faster. That same fish. He's followed us. Oh, just my size. See the that's actually another thing to point out, is the catchphrases. While they are the same catchphrases, um they uh, 
I'll still repeat themselves tons as well. Like he hasn't gotten new catchphrases, which means that you're going to hear the same stuff over and over and over again. Which, uh, after playing like non-stop for a couple of hours, I imagine will become pretty tedious. You can mute it. I know my OCD is killing me as well. I'm just trying to progress through it as quickly as possible. So not collecting everything but it does feel bad just doing that like it's not the way the game is intended to be played you're supposed to collect all the shiny things and and take your time with them so it does yeah it's bothering me as well don't worry all right we're gonna give this clam 150 coins to open the gate for us and then we can keep going up I think we're actually getting kind of close to the king jellyfish, so maybe I will just play through to that point again because it was it was kind of fun. I uh, used to fight that boss. I think he's only out. Uh, yeah, he's only just up here. It's not that far. Gosh, get out of here, man! Let me know your thoughts though on the game, guys. I'm curious to find out if you're going to be playing this one, checking it out, if you're planning on platinuming it, uh, or just playing through it like I am at the moment. Um, I think it's probably. Uh, you know, an easy-ish flat, it'll just take a bit of time. Obviously there's no shortcut. It's not a red leak game, it's not going to be like a 10 minute platinum, it's going to take you a bit of time, but that's not a bad thing. Like I always say, those easy platinums have a, have a time and a place, um, but it is always, you know, oh, it is always satisfying, you know, going for a, a more longer time-consuming plat. I mean, I mean, this isn't a longer time-consuming plat per se. I, I said this before as well, but wall jumping is a, like, mechanic. You just don't see as frequently in games now, right? Like, it feels very PS2, PS3 era. It's not, it's just not something you see as much in PS4 games. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hopefully it's not all the way down the hill. Oh, no. That was the boss as well. I should have just gone straight up. I don't know why I fought that guy. <sighs> After this long 20 minute loading scene. Good thing is it's just here. Hey, this is kind of weird as well. So once we pass this part here, I'll show you guys. You go um, and fight the, you go to the Jellyfish King's like arena. And, ah uh, wait, sorry, of course, loading screen with nothing to look at, no information, not even like, oh, don't forget to jump, or click shiny things, or something, it's just nothing, it's just boring. Um, so you can look down here, and you can see the level, but it's all like, low textured and weird looking, I don't know what that's about, or why they did that, but, yeah. It looks terrible. <laughs> Alright, skip this. So this guy here, Oh, I skipped this cool cutscene. He sings. So what you have to do here is he, he like, lands on you. And then uh, you have to, like, kind of jump over the, the the force field and then hit him. Which I've neglected to do twice. I found this hard before because the depth perception on it is a little bit off, I think. Like, it's not quite right. It's weird, like, you have to be kind of far away from him to do it properly, I don't know. This boss fight actually reminds me a little bit of, uh, Klonoa, if you guys remember that game on the PS1. When, like, the very first boss you fight in that game is, like, in a round arena like this, and you, you kind of have to go around it and hit him. And it's, like, it's a different mechanic, obviously, to this. Completely different mechanic. However, like, it's just the arena and that round ring nature of it at the top of this, this hill kind of reminds me of it. I'm just kind of go, oh man, I died. <sighs> okay. He's not hard. He doesn't actually change his formula every time. You just have to do the same thing over and over. So, you know, there's that. He doesn't have like a final stage. The only difference is he puts out jellyfish pink ones and then these blue ones but I don't really know the difference between them maybe they have like a bigger range or something or they're faster I'm sure there is a difference I just don't know what it actually is 
But I seem to be more aggressive, actually. Come on. There we go. There we go, we got him. So he's gonna give us a jelly. And uh, now we can get out of here. We gotta use our tongue to rocket power our way down this hill. This is weird as well. You can fall off this really easily. And there's a part in it where I like kept falling off it because I kept thinking you were supposed to go right when you actually had to go left. It's just after you pass through like this little tunnel here. Oh, not this bit. It must be this bit. Just there. Because that, that archway like makes you think, oh, you're supposed to go that way. But nope. Golden spatula up here. And then we gotta go back to Squidward and uh, and give him his jelly. The loading screens really do kill it, if I'm being honest. I, I really do wish there wasn't as many loading screens. It's frustrating, especially because on PS4, we know that they can do better than that. Oh, yeah. oh, that feels so much better. <laughs> I didn't listen to this last time. <laughs> oh no, what are we doing with the Squidward? <laughs> For my best friend Squidward, can I rub some on? SpongeBob's way too excited to rub jelly on Squidward. Look at him dancing. I don't know if this should be in a kid's game. What if I just gave you this? Yeah, Squidward doesn't want our advances. We've got a spatula from that's kind of nice. Nine out of... So it shows you the other ones you can do that we kind of skipped over. So we missed three, so we can go back and get those at some point. We also missed a ton of socks, by the looks of it. Can you see? Oh, you can see how many are on each level too. Okay, cool. Well, that's, that's basically it. I think that's a good place to stop it because, um, let me take these off. I think it's a good place to end things just because we've, we've kind of seen like all of this level and all of this section of the game again. So we can compare it to the GameCube and PS4 version. I might do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two using the footage I recorded last week and the footage this week. The game inherently looks better than it did last week. It, 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 it runs better for sure. There's no screen tearing, and it just looks amazing. You can see the grass and everything in here now when you're looking at this, and it looks great. Um, but the game is the same game. It feels exactly the same. The platforming feels the same. SpongeBob's attacks feel the same. I will say that uh, Patrick feels a little bit different, but I don't know. It could be just me. Otherwise, yeah, that's that's that. Uh, I might upload this as a separate video as well, just without commentary, so people who are interested in just seeing some pure gameplay can check it out and, and look at that too, so that probably come up as a separate video. But that's that's SpongeBob. Let me know if you guys are going to be checking this one out. If you are, uh, yeah, curious to get your thoughts on, on what you think of the game as well, and whether or not you're going to be going for the Platinum. Uh, like I said, if you're interested in the guide, I'm happy to pull a trophy roadmap together for this game after I've played through it as well, which uh, I'm, I'm kind of keen to do. So yeah, let me know, and I can do that. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for getting to the end of this video. This is probably going to be like a 30-minute video, so if you got to the end of it, then uh, then congrats! That's that's that means you're a hardcore trophy fan. If you if you did get to the end of it, uh, what's a code word I can give you? So you can say the code word in the comment section so I know. Okay. The code word is boss coffee. So leave that in your comment and I'll know that you got to this part of the video. All of you you guys who watch my videos regularly who say great vid, if you if you don't use the code word then I'll know you didn't finish the video. That's a little trick. A little trick for young players there. Um alrighty. I'm <laughs> trying to trick my my subscribers thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next video bye for now